Hey, hello, workshop class. Um, I got a question here about uh, one of your two-dimensional motions. So I see you guys are moving along, and uh, these get a little trickier. Um, let me uh, point out that anytime you're doing projectile motion, the uh, motion horizontal and the motion vertical are separate. So I like to use this description. I like to say to, two, to do two-dimensional motion you're going to do one-dimensional motion twice. And so what helps me is to kind of make a little chart and do all my math for the X direction and all my math for the Y direction. And then it really looks like the stuff I've been doing with one-dimensional motion. So, so let me just say it again and try to help you with some confidence here that if you know how to do one-dimensional motion, you know how to do these harder two-dimensional problems because, again, you just do the one dimension twice, one for the X and one for the Y. Now, granted, the, the motion is coupled together, so you have to also kind of understand how the X motion and the Y motion are hooked together. So definitely a harder set of problems than the one-dimensional motion. But I, but I can't overstate that enough that I'm going to just make two columns and I'm going to do calculations for X and calculations for Y and, and see where it gets us. And, and that's true for any two-dimensional problem. But, but this one in particular, let me uh, read it. Because it says, uh, Melissa left her second-story apartment, uh, but she forgot her keys. Her roommate throws the keys down from the balcony. Now, ignoring air resistance, all right? Uh, so that right there, let me pause. Uh, that's a signal that we know the accelerations. Uh, that is, in the x direction, the acceleration is zero. And in the y direction, the acceleration is the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So again, for projectile motion, if there's nothing but gravity, so in this case, no air resistance, no rocket motor tied to it, nothing else, Gravity pulls things down at 9.8. So there's the negative 9.8 meters per second. So that's the acceleration in the y direction. Gravity does not pull things horizontally. So the acceleration horizontally is zero. So to make it a little more clear, I'll put a sub x and a sub y. Uh, that is saying the accelerations. Uh, but hopefully that was also clear just because it was in the X column and in the Y column. But that's the, the key to any problem is to realize the accelerations here. And add to that, this is a constant acceleration and so is this. So we could use those formulas. In fact, I'll just write them down here. The final velocity would then equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That's the first equation. And the second equation would say the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times squared. So I'm going to make good use out of these two because, remember, these two are only valid for constant acceleration. Now, sometimes to make it clear, it might even be better to put an X down below where it's necessary. Now, that says X, so I won't bother to put a sub X. But these little sub Xs, this would be the initial velocity X. This would be final velocity in the X. This would be final position X. This would be initial position X. This is acceleration. In fact, we could take these two general equations, which, remember, are valid only if you have constant acceleration, and then as we apply them to the x direction uh, with an acceleration of zero, we can see that the final speed in the x direction is the same as the initial speed. Well, that makes sense. There's no acceleration in the x direction, so it keeps its same speed. And the second equation becomes final position is equal to initial position plus initial velocity in the x direction times time and then zero. So I, I hope you see what I've done here. Uh, what I've done is I'm going to calculate just in the one dimension, the x dimension. Uh, I told myself that the acceleration is constant, so I can use these equations for constant kinematics. Um, and even then, zero makes it even simpler. So, so these are the, the two main equations I'm going to use in the X motion here.
Okay, now over here, I can do the same kind of logic. There would be a final velocity in the y direction. It would equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction times time. Uh, the second equation would be y final position would equal to y initial position plus the initial velocity in the y times time plus one-half acceleration in the y t squared. So again, these are those famous two constant acceleration problems. So I'll say it again. This is constant acceleration in the y direction, just like it was in the x direction. But there is a number here. There's a negative 9.8, whereas over here it was a zero. So if you take these two and apply them for this case, uh, it becomes something like this. The final velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction minus 9.8t. And the other equation becomes y final equals the initial position plus the initial velocity in the y times time minus, and so right here, the acceleration in the y direction, I'm going to put a negative 9.8. Taking half of that makes 4.9t squared. And so that's kind of my first thinking. And I really haven't even read much of the problem yet. All I've read is that first line that says, hey, somebody is throwing a set of keys. Looks like Melissa. Or no, uh, her roommate is throwing it. Melissa's catching it. So, so, uh, But her, her roommate throws the keys down from the balcony and ignores air resistance. And so the fact that it's two dimensions, I made two columns. Uh, the fact that I'm ignoring air resistance and there's no rockets or anything else, there's only gravity, I know I have these accelerations, I know they're constant, so I write down the constant acceleration problems and I apply it. So, so that's what the first sentence has given me. Let me keep reading. It says, Melissa has a horizontal distance of 8.16 meters away from the balcony. All right, so maybe I better draw a picture. So maybe this is the apartment building and maybe the balcony is up here somewhere. And this is the launch point, if you will. And I'll just kind of draw straight down and then straight over. So, so Melissa is standing right about here. Uh, she's 8.16 meters away. Okay. Now, the keys are thrown from some vertical height, H naught. Okay, they don't really uh, say that number. Oh, in fact, looking down at the question, that's one of the things we're asked for. Okay, so it's thrown from an unknown height, H naught, above the catch point. Oh, catch point. Okay, so maybe I drew too much too quickly. Uh, Melissa's probably going to stick her hands out, maybe kind of a basket catch, and maybe... She's going to catch it right about there. So, so my bad on the drawing. Uh, it should only go down to here. That's the H naught. So the H naught is from the release point on down to the catching point, not not all the way down to the ground like I, I first drew. Okay. So let me just say it again. The keys are thrown from a height of H naught above the catching point. Note this is a positive number, but depending on your coordinate system, ah. Your equations may require you to do a negative. Uh, let me address that before I keep reading. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It kind of depends on where you want to put your grid here because as you can, you can see, the uh, starting point, I'm going for a different color of a pen here. How about a green one? Um, but the starting point is clearly right here. And, of course, another piece of all of these problems is putting some kind of mathematical coordinate system on here. Uh, some people like to use, and I'll, maybe I'll do the, the light blue, the launch point. And that's very, very common. And I'm debating myself which one to use. Uh, and maybe I will do that one. I, I was going to go ahead and do a grid down here in this corner. And that's also another common one. But 
the launch point is the most common one. So, so I'll do that one. Uh, both of them would work. So whether you would do the blue or the green, they work. But you can hopefully see a, a, a subtle difference here. If, if you use the blue one as your launch point, then the initial position, both X and Y. So, so right down here in these equations, initial position. Um, I should have put an initial. Initial the initial position X and Y would be zero. So that's kind of the advantage of it. Of course, now it goes down. So the landing place, the final position in the Y direction would be a negative value. So maybe that's the disadvantage. Whereas if we use the launch point in the green here, uh, the, well, horizontal initial position would still be zero, but the, the starting y position would be h naught. So we could do either one, but let me uh, cross out the green one. I made a decision now. And that's what you'll, you're going to have to always make is that decision. Okay, where do you want to put your grid? What do you want to measure from? And know that there is no right or wrong way to do your grid. It's just a mathematical technique or tool uh, that we use. And so it would, you know, uh, land at, you know, uh, you know, at, at, at different numbers and start at different numbers, but your answers would all be the same, which for this problem, we're looking for the time in the air and the initial height. Okay. All right. Now, it says if the keys were thrown with a speed of 7.27 7 meters per second at an angle of 19.7 above the horizontal. Okay. So, Melissa's roommate is tossing it up as it lands into Melissa's basket catch, okay? And this initial angle is 19.7 degrees, and that initial speed, uh, I didn't give myself much room here, is the 7.27 .27 meters per second. So let me encourage you to always doodle a little diagram again. This kind of helps uh, your understanding, okay? And I, I know I'm taking a long time to get there. Hopefully that's not uh, too boring for you. Uh, but I want you to understand kind of kind of my thinking, uh, and, and you know, and why I made this two column chart, and then why I you know took a constant acceleration equations, and then why I you know put in zero for the acceleration in the x direction, and why I put in a negative nine point eight. And so this is just kind of my, my my thinking here, and of course also a big one is you know a grid, you know, and 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 know that hey you can put the grid anywhere you want. Um, of course, once you cho choose it, uh, I like to say this, you have, you have freedom of choice, but once chosen, it'll have power over you. And what I mean by that is once I've chosen up here, I have to then, you know, say the initial vertical height is zero and the initial horizontal height is, is zero. Uh, I'm, I'm stuck to that de decision. And of course, so be it. If it, you know, it's, you know, hopefully it was a good decision and I don't mind being stuck with good decisions, but you, you don't always make good decisions. And so some are easier, some are hard, but there is no right or wrong coordinate system. That's, that's for sure. Okay, so our question is to find two pieces. That is the time in the air and the initial height. All right, so let's start working these um, I wrote down both sets, but I have a feeling, and so let me start here. You never quite know, like any puzzle, you just got to start tinkering with it and going, okay, what, what information am I going to get? But I do like the fact that there are two unknowns and I know a little bit about position. That makes me talk, think about the equations for positions here. And the fact that I have two of them, I know from a math class that two equation, two unknowns is perfect. So I'm kind of hoping, let's see what happens here, that if I write out these two equations for position, and I'll just ignore the, ignore the velocity ones, but if I write out these two for positions, that I will have two equations with those two unknowns. And then it's just mathematics to, to solve. 
So let's see. So starting with the X direction, uh, what's the final position of the keys? Well, they go horizontal, 8.16. Uh, what's the initial position of the keys? Zero. Uh, what is the initial velocity, and catch this, initial velocity in the x direction? So it is not the 7.27. Uh, let me maybe draw a vector showing the keys being launched at 7.27 because then this angle, the 19.7, we can say, and this was the whole point of chapter two, was to teach you about vectors and say, well, how do I get the X component and how do I get the Y component? Because now you can see that you will need them. The initial velocity in the X direction then would be the x component of this 7.27. So if you remember your trig function cosine theta, where theta is this 19.7, it would be this adjacent piece. And this would then be the initial velocity in the x direction. And then it would be divided by the hypotenuse of 7.27. And so if I move this to the other side, I can say that the initial velocity in the x direction would be 7.27 times cosine of 19.7. So that's what I'm going to put over here. I'm going to put 7.27 times cosine of 19.7. And then multiplied by time. And I like what I see here. I have an equation with only one known, un one unknown, and that has time in it. I could actually then solve this one. I, I was kind of thinking I might get coupled equations and I'd have two equations with two unknowns, but this is even easier. This is just one equation with one unknown. Uh, so before I come over here, I, why don't I use that one? Because it might be helpful over here, okay? So let me grab my uh, calculator here. Um, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm in radians. So let me switch back to degrees. And so let me take the 7.27 and multiply it by cosine of 19.7. And this is saying 6.84t. And so this is the initial speed in the x direction. So again, this was the important part of chapter two, was learning how to take a vector at an angle, that is a magnitude angle, and say how much is horizontal and how much is vertical? And I haven't done the vertical one, but I, that's going to come over here into this column where I deal with Y stuff, okay? And now I can get this first answer. So 8.16 uh, divided by the last answer gives me a time of 1.19 seconds. Okay, so... So there's half the problem done. And like I said, I got kind of lucky here. Usually these are a little harder where, you know, both unknowns are here and both unknowns are here. And then you got some mathematics, you got a system of equations. But in this case, I just had that one equation and, and one unknown. Okay. So let me let me go with my, my hunch again. Remember, I had really four equations to work with. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen. with, And I might have to do all four. Keep that in mind. It's a puzzle. I wasn't real sure which way to go. But, but I kind of suspected this because it had distance involved. So that's why I went with it. And I got even luckier than I thought. I only had one unknown in it, so I could solve for it. Let me, let me do the same thing. My hunch is uh, something with uh, distance in it because we're, we're asked to find the, the distance. Okay. So let's put in what we know. Okay. So what's the final position of the key? Well, this is... Uh, way down here. Now, remember, 
we put our origin up here. So the keys would be landing downward a distance of h naught. So the final position is negative h naught. If you're going to treat h naught as a positive number, and the grid we picked, this is being the launch point, makes it a distance downward. So that's why the negative is important, and that's why the, the hint is in the problem or the note. It says note that h is a positive number, but depending on your coordinate system, your equation may require a negative. See, it did. Now, as a side note, and I'll say it again, if this was done in green, and I use this as it, my final landing point would be zero. I'd put a zero there. Now, let's go to the initial spot. So the initial spot is up here where it was thrown from. And in my blue coordinate system, um, really it's more of a cyan than a blue, huh? Oh, but, yeah, I'll keep calling it blue. Why not? It's kind of a blue-green here, really a cyan. Uh, but this uh, blue one, uh, this right here would be the initial position. So in my coordinate system, it's zero. If I had done the green coordinate system, uh, then it would have been a positive h naught. So I would have had a zero here and a positive h naught here. Okay, But instead, I have a zero here and a negative h naught. So you can see mathematically those are the same. If the h is on this side, it's positive. So you can see the blue one or the green one would have worked just fine. Okay, let me keep going. Uh, then it says the initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, well, let me come back to this triangle. This is this chapter two again. Uh, I, what I need is this part, how much motion is upward. See, I'll say it again, the total velocity is 7.27. It has an x component and a y component. So if we write the sine of 19.7, we have the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that's how we're going to get the component. That's why, again, and I keep saying it, you went through this in chapter two. And I know at this point you're, you're not an expert at doing that. And so that's what makes these problems a little bit harder. You have to kind of dig down deep. But eventually, hopefully, you'll get really good at Chapter 2. So your brain power isn't being spent on finding these components. Your brain power is spent on the, on the physics. Because we're going to be doing this all semester long. A anytime, actually. Uh, anytime we do physics or engineering. Because directions matter. And we've got to get components to them. All right. So let me use that down here. So the initial velocity in the y direction then would be this 7.27 times the sine of 19.7. And then the time it's in the air, ah, here's where, as I was saying at the very beginning, to organize your thoughts, you might want to make two columns, an X or a Y, but note that some information from X can be also used in Y, and the information we got from X is the time that it spins in the air. Well, that can be used over here. See, the time is just a number. It's just a scalar. It doesn't have like an X component and a Y component. Uh, time is a scalar. So whatever time I get, which I, which I solved here for the X, I can also use over here in the Y. So right here, I'm going to put this 1.19 seconds. Uh, now, my last term, I'm going to have to put on another line, minus 4.9, and then again, time squared. So 1.19 seconds squared. And so negative h naught, and then those are just numbers, and that's it, right? One equation and one unknown. Uh, although if I had done that first, I would have had an unknown t in here. So then I would have had uh, two unknowns in here. And I wouldn't have recognized it until I went to the x. So I kind of got lucky that I did the, the x first because it only had one unknown in it. And then I could use that over here, which resulted in only one unknown. So again, the math got a little bit easier than I thought it would. I thought I was going to have two equations with two unknowns and have a system of equations. But I don't. Okay, so now we can finish the problem here. So this is uh, 2.27 times the sine of 19.7 times 1.19.
minus 4.9 times 1.19 squared, giving me a distance of negative 4.02. And then I guess technically last step is to multiply both sides by negative 1, and we get the height. All right. Hope that will be useful to some of you.